It all began with a love of late 19th and early 20th century photography. Photographers such as Carlton Watkins, Julia Margaret Cameron, Eugene Atche, and Carl Blasfeld had a profound influence on me. There's a stillness in their work because of the long exposures demanded by early photographic technology that for me evokes a sense of mystery, especially in their images of nature. I began photographing with a barrel lens from the 19th century on my 4x5 view camera. It renders light and color differently than contemporary lenses, lending a 19th century feel to my images. The glass plates of Carlton Watkins then inspired me to print my images on glass using liquid silver emulsion. I continued to work with these materials for several years, but I eventually wanted to print on a larger scale and experiment with color images as well. After researching various processes, I finally found a way to print color images on transparent materials. Most of the color photographs in transparencies were photographed on 4x5 Polaroid type 79 film. I originally was using the Polaroids as a test for exposure before shooting with film, but I was drawn to the strange colors and funky quality that the Polaroids produced. So with the help of Steve and Laurie at Photographic Solutions, we were able to make high resolution scans of the Polaroids, which later enabled me to print them on plexiglass. To enhance the qualities of the transparent print, the framing was pivotal. The custom designed frames from Picture This of Westport hold the images away from the backboard, allowing for a haunting after image effect. I've enjoyed experimenting and playing with these and other techniques. In the final analysis though, I believe the images themselves must create their own magic, regardless of the medium they're printed on. This is an orchid that I photographed uh, using natural light. Um, I love, I was really drawn to this orchid because of the veins and the textures, and I love the, the stems and the shape they made. Um, I photographed this with my um, barrel lens from the late 1800s and my 4x5 view camera. Um, first I shot it with a Polaroid to test the exposure, and then I shot it on film. And what happened was when I got, had gotten the film back, I didn't really like the way the film came out as much as the Polaroid. Uh, the color on the Polaroid was really funky. This actually wasn't even a green background. It was it's kind of off-white. But the way the color shifted and, and the lighting and everything and the way it rendered the texture, I really, really liked the Polaroid. So I ended up using the Polaroid, scanning that and working from that instead of the negative. This is an anthurium that I photographed. Um, I've actually photographed a lot of anthuriums because they have just such wonderful form and texture. And um, this one, again, was photographed with the barrel lens from the 1800s um, on Polaroid film. So again, the color shifted a bit, which I really liked the way it went to the yellow and the green. And I just love the way that the center was so red and such a contrast. Um, this is a poppy that I photographed. It was actually starting to deteriorate, and I loved the way it accentuated um, all the lines in the, in the petals. I photograph a lot of poppies. They're my favorite flower. They just have such interesting centers and texture and everything. And um, again, this was shot with the antique lens and the 4x5 view camera on the Polaroid film. And uh, this is a portrait of, actually, I took of my daughter when she was about eight or nine. One of my favorite photographers is Julia Margaret Cameron, um, the Victorian portrait photographer. And I did some portraits in this style. And when I began doing the portraits, I deliberately set out to mimic her style of photographing. And she did it with natural light. She actually did it on glass plates, but, um, which I also really interested in but I tried to evoke that sense of timelessness. Okay. 
I wanted to include um, flowers in black and white um, because I think that photographing in black and white, it draws your attention to the shapes and the textures and the forms of the flowers. You're not as distracted by the color. And I think certain flowers, you can really make your point uh, with them in black and white. For instance, the thistle, the spikiness of it, and um, it almost seems to pulsate. I don't know if it would do it quite as much in color, but the, the black and white, you really are focused on that. The clematis um, was from a friend's garden, and um, I just love the spidery center and, and the leaves. Even though they're white, they just have so much texture, and, um, and especially for this process, the, the spidery center really is echoed with the after image. The peony I, I painted with light. Um, you can probably almost tell because the shadows are just a very surreal, almost like underwater quality to it. Um, it was just, you know, such a beautiful flower. It seemed to be bursting. This echinacea, I actually photographed at the same time I had done um, the other two. And uh, I just love the pattern that was created by the center and um, really wanted to focus on that. So I came in tight. And uh, I did paint it with light. And there was a little bit of movement here in the leaves. So they're a little out of focus. Um, and I really wanted to do this one. This is the largest one I've printed. It's 40 by 50. Um, just seemed to really warrant the large scale to really be able to see that center. Here's a sunflower from my friend, actually my friend Kathy's garden. She grows these enormous sunflowers, it's huge. And um, I just love the way it almost looked like a planet you know, or something very strange. Um, and I did, I painted this one with light also and side lit it quite a bit to really show the texture. And this might not be from Polaroid as I'm thinking about it. I think that this is from the negative, the black and white negative. This is a triptych I did. Um, again, one of my favorite photographers is Carlton Watkins. And he did a lot of triptychs in, you know, of the American West. Um, I was out in Denver last year. And I, was, I went to the Garden of the Gods and I was photographing. I was using actually a plastic camera, a Holga camera. And um, the way I had set it, the, the frames overlapped each other. And it was kind of an accident, but when I developed the film and saw it, I really loved it. And, I, and these three in particular seem to really connect. So um, I really wanted to do a panoramic triptych kind of an idea. Um, and we came up with this way of framing it. It's very reminiscent of um, old stereo cards. And, uh, that was the motivation for making it like this. Sometimes accidents end up being the best discoveries. <laughs>